Good morning everyone, welcome to my channel. So today we're going to be working on the final side to my scrappy bag. I'm not sure if I mentioned in the last video that once I got all the bits and pieces on that one, I would stitch it on as well as this one, this one, and I also did the base. So I'm ready for the next and final side. Now, I have been tossing around for um, some time using this panel. It was just a random little bits and pieces. I stitched it down, um, still got some pins in it. I was going to cut it to size like so and do something on it for the side. But I just, I don't know, I just can't cut it. I'm just gonna take my bracelet off. It's going to chink. I cleaned up my room yesterday and found it sitting in the tray beside me. Put it on thinking I probably wouldn't do a video this morning and of course in I am here decided to do this and now my bracelet is back off in the tray. So that lasted well time didn't it? This is not going to happen. I need to save that for a rainy day. Don't know what but it's just not going to happen. So what I've been thinking about is different, different um, prints, uh, different patchwork ideas. So I went to, first of all, this. And I thought, that'll be great. I can really explore with that and do something. But I, I, um, don't have wider. See, I'm still thinking my fabric's not wide enough to pull that off properly. I've only got a jelly roll two inches, or what are they, two and a half inches wide jelly rolls? Two and a half inches. So I sort of started placing a few pieces, like I cut the bird out, and then I felt I had to bring him right up to that corner to get that one. Then I cut this this one and I thought right the bird's got to come right over now so it just isn't the best thickness of fabrics it's probably doable but I just felt it wasn't the best thickness of fabrics to get the widths I wanted then I started thinking about the style of my project and it's yeah not really suitable uh, so I ruled that out I then went and had a look at um, some Instagram and I just typed in different quilt styles. That one is very much suited to um, my size fabric. And that's actually a quarter log cabin or a scrappy half log cabin. That one I'm not too sure about. I guess I've got to work out how well will all my trims and bits and pieces sit as I come up and have to go around corners, but do I need to go around corners? No, because I could just shoot straight through there, then one would come down, then up through there. Actually, that could work. The other one I was looking at was this one where I just start on a corner and lay down my strips. And I saved it thinking, well, that would work. But I think what's drawn me to that is because there's a heap of them together, which look amazing, and I won't get that. I will only get that, which is a little boring. So that that was number one there for a bit. Just thinking about this. Hmm. I think this one might be the way to go. So I believe they start it. One of my little bird could be at the start of it. Is he? He's a little bit too big. I need a square to kick it off. Nice florally square. Or does it matter? Square? Let's see if I can get a square out of this. I'm going to lose those buds. Probably overthinking it all. Yeah, I don't like that. 
just creating scraps, aren't I? Let's find. Maybe this is a bit better. Just a simple square. Don't worry about prints. Just cut a square. So as you know, if you've been watching me for a little while, I hand sew the quilt bits just to challenge oneself a little. I'll just take it back a fraction. Then the next piece, now let's see if we can use some scraps. And the next piece would be there. Needle and thread. So that's how we're going to proceed with this one. I can't believe we're at the end of it. It was been so fun just playing with a little bit of shabby chic. And I've loved this little roll of um, fabric for some time. So here's my end there. I presume this is how they proceeded. It looks like there's this little side goes on first, trim it back, the next little side. So how have you all been? Nothing too much to report here. Just doing what we do every day. Now my mind's just drifted off to all those mundane things that I've got to do today. See, not very exciting. Pepper and Bandit are good. Fudge is good. Okay, he's a different cat since two things. Casper's passed away, so he's the king of the house. And he's a lot more relaxed. He was quite an uptight sort of cat, and he was, yeah, would pace, and I don't know, he was just a, a stressy little cat. And um, now he is so much more relaxed. He'll come in. Won't be as meow meow -y. And just sort of cruise around, sit, relax, watch, follow me a little bit more instead of just watching for Casper and when he could pounce on him and, you know, just generally horsing around. He's just so much more chilled. I think the latter years of his life are going to be quite serene for him, which is good. He was a bit of a feisty cat towards Casper. Well, Casper was too, the pair of them. They were always taking a swipe if they passed. Nothing full on, but if they walked past each other, one would just throw the paw out. And if the other one ignored it, it was fine. But if then that one turned around and said, hey, why'd you do that? Then it could be on. Now, I'm going to trim that makes it tricky when you're stitching it down to a piece but it will be fine so i get my diamond shape again now i guess the question is how thick of a strip do we want we don't want it that thick might cut them in how much are we going to take off might cut it there we'll use the writing as a guide so what did we take off that strip? That'll be our little recipe, say an inch. Because you lose a little bit in the seam. So the next one comes through here. What are we going to choose? Any more scraps that we can utilize? Be great to get rid of some before the project finishes. So let's take off an inch. I 
And since um, Fudgy's had those few teeth removed, because he got himself a bit of an abscess popped up out of nowhere. So he had to have some dental surgery, which was all very touch and go, because we were told by another vet that he had early onset kidney disease and probably had six months to live. Well, that was 18 months ago. So when we went to the vet, we went to a different vet, um, we sort of said, you know, we think, because he's so thin, but he, he's always been a bit of a thin cat. I might get a bigger piece of cotton. I'm not going to make it. He's always been a thin cat. So we assumed that the sort of wasting away that we could see in his back end, his back legs, was just part of it. And then when the abscess popped up, we thought, oh, here we go. This is it. We lost Caspi a couple of weeks prior. Now we're going to lose fudge like we couldn't believe it. So we battened down the hatches ready and in he went and they did his blood work and it was perfect. 17-year-old cat with perfect blood work. And we're like, but what happened to the kidney disease? And he said, they said, he doesn't have kidney disease. There's nothing wrong with any of his organs. So they were happy to proceed with a descaling and a clean and check out the tooth that appeared to have cracked, hence the abscess. So under he went with a good clean bill of health. So we thought, well, this should end well. And it did. It did take out five teeth. He's got a bit of, you know, dodgy teeth. Amazing, he's had such a, you know, good food other than pet food. He's had good food, meat, and, you know, we really look after him. Obviously, the vet said his kidneys are good, so you have looked after him. But his teeth, it's like all the pet teeth. I mentioned this a few videos back, and um, a few of you mentioned that if only the pet food industry was regulated. And you're all right, it's, it's shocking. It's like there's a heap of sugar or something in the food so that these teeth are rotting. Why are all these pets getting rotten teeth? I remember my father saying once that when he was a kid, his pets would very often not have rotten teeth and they used to live to a ripe old age and they'd eat a mixed diet of you know table scraps and human food but now this whole pet food industry has popped up we've got all these animals with dental problems just doesn't quite make sense does it So what are you stitching? Are you stitching, watching and stitching? Or are you doing some work and watching? What are you all up to out there? This is a sharp needle. I just know this is going to end poorly for me. Imagine doing a whole quilt by hand. Oh my goodness. My goodness. I've been watching a lot of the... YouTubers that have obviously gone to the big um, quilt fair in Britain, England. And oh boy, do some great quilts there. The work. Mm. Kate from Last Homely House has done a few videos on her visit and she had Agnes's quilt. In there and oh gee it looks so gorgeous at the distance and she's been doing the odd little interview with different designers of some of the quilts and it's been um, yeah really good okay now where are we at so we can trim 
Let's trim that side. We can trim that side. Okay, and now we finger press that. Yeah, this will work a treat. And put it back on the diamond so we don't lose our way. We're going to do that one next. So we go shopping in the fabric. <clears throat> Can we do the blue? Need something pink, I think. This one here. Or can we get it out of a scrap? Oh, that's so close. I just don't think so. Any of these? No. They must be about an inch. Gosh, now I've got all these scraps. I'm going to have to come up with a project to use my scraps. Let's maybe run just a bit close to that guy. I think we'll go with this pink one. Stop overthinking it, girl. Try and get those little flowers in it, overthinking it. Just trim that for a little bit. Now, where was my little template? So there's no measuring here. This is just rough quilting. There was a chap that um, Kate from Last Homely House interviewed. And I love his work. He does lots of samples of things and then puts them all together randomly. Now I did follow him on Instagram. So I'm thinking his name might be close by. Um, a full English, Chris English. That's the gentleman. Yeah, Chris English Quilts. If you're on Instagram, go and check him out. Oh, there's actually Kate having a chat to him. He does panels of quilting out of reclaimed textiles, and it could be tea towels, could be workman's clothes, all sorts of random, random, um, we want that the right way. random fabrics and oh they're so so beautiful and he's he's brave he's what I call brave in his construction of placement of colors I'm a bit too oh typical probably predictable he's brave there was another gentleman she also interviewed too he was interesting now what was his name Joe the quilter Joe Cunningham, and he does um, real contemporary from photos. She was talking about this one quilt with him, and he had taken photos of the bitumen. You know when bitumen gets little fine cracks and the council come through with tar, and they just drizzle it into those little fine cracks, so your bitumen gets quite an interesting little floraletti shape or little creaks and cracks you know just little well it doesn't creak but you know what I mean well he took a heap of photos of this years ago and then he has had an embroiderer a machine embroiderer you know the ones that would write do a logo on clothing I got the impression that was the style of embroiderer with one of those fancy machines to take the image of these funny little cracks and put it into a piece of white fabric with black thread. And then he has taken all those little squares or rectangles with this black intense stitching on it and quilted them into a huge quilt that was predominantly white. And there's sort of just a, a swish of them through the center. And there's just these random black marks and the more you look at it, the more some of the marks sort of look like something. He pointed to the one and he said, oh, that looked to me, looks like a, an angel. And it did. 
It was really, really clever. So go and check out Kate last homely house. I believe it was the second video that she did is where where she interviewed the two guys. Just so different. I think we've got a quilt show coming up soon. I'm not sure when I'll be programming this in the week. If it's this week, next week, I, I don't know. But I'm pretty sure it might be next month. So I'm really looking forward to that. I love wandering around all the quilts. Okay, so this is going to be a bit of a slow process. So what we might do, so I've already done 20 minutes and I've barely got any fabric down. So what I might have to do, I'll cut the next one, but I might pause the video, get them all laid down. And then come back. we will be here forever otherwise so let's get this one Do I hope I put it on the right side then I think I did gotta keep your wits about yourself when you're quilting don't you you can't just zone out because you find that you've got something in the wrong spot it's probably why quilting's not my thing you forever I'm picking, I might trim that side a little bit. I can see the wadding peeking out. So let's just knock that back too. Okay. I think the trick to this one is keep the corner here so that you don't lose your pattern. So the next one is there. So let's have a little look. I'm thinking a spot next. Yep. This is a pretty little little block, this one. So I do need to cut the inch off. Where's the template? Don't tell me I've lost it. Yeah. Here it is. Not that it really is too hard to work out where I'm going here. So if you're doing some slow stitching and you want to create an interesting background, don't rule out doing a block but hand stitching. Hand stitching at first. And you could do a few neutral ones and then um, I'll just rough cut that up there and have them just in your stash ready to go. Just some, you know, nice backgrounds. So that will go there. Oh, I love it when they come together. I need my little pins. <clears throat> to carry on with my pieces and then when I come back in the next section in a few seconds they will be done and I uh, can clean up this mess bring out the next mess and away we go from there all right guys look after yourselves no I'm not saying goodbye that's I'm so used to saying that I'll see you in a second bye okay I'm back and I've got all my goodies just here ready to start embellishing my piece. Came together really well, so I'm very happy with that. I've got my um, half 
log cabin. You can imagine a heap of these together. You could really play with their positioning to create different effects. It's, yeah, very clever, clever. Okay, I've just turned on my iron because this is the last little bit of that pink ribbon. So it just needs, I think this was tied around a bunch of flowers or something. It was gifted to me. Ah, oh, pays if I plug it in at the other end. Hang on one moment, guys. Just let me <clears throat> plug in my iron. Goodness me. Okay, while we wait for that to heat up, we might have a play with some sari silk. Now, I think the, the theory with this particular piece or this block is I sort of need to follow what I just did. Little piece, big piece, little piece, big piece. I'm thinking. Let's have a look. Got ourselves a nice little piece of sari silk. Oops, something fell. Sort of along the lines of that. I'll just do some pinning, I think. And then once I get these different textures in place, so that's the lace, the ribbon, and the sari silk, then I come back through with the threads and couch in different threads and also um, yeah, do some embroidery. You can feel the heat of that iron creeping up on me. Just going to move it. I just have a feeling I could get sizzled. <laughs> Might move that one through the center. There's nothing particularly fantastic about that floral design there. So I'm just going to run it straight through the center. It really is just a case of keep stitching and laying down and stitching. And there we go. Let's give this a little iron been avoiding this crimpled up little bit here for some time but now I've had to iron it to use it and I've got probably enough to do a big line And then maybe if I did that there, I want to use every, every last piece of it. So I might pop that through there. Now what I do with the ribbon um, is just very care oh, i've got sari silk silk hanging off of me here drop in the bin is just very carefully couch it down with some itty bitty stitches that holds it into position then using some of these decorative threads i'll come back across it and do a fly stitch but to get it into positions what you want to do first So let's just pull that pin back. Can't cut through a pin, Corinne. That would jigger the dressmaking scissors, wouldn't it? Now see, I'm hoping I can get that piece through there or there. I'm thinking there. Need to investigate the lace department and get some 
lace through or some tatting or something. Now, in the past, I was using a mix of a little white lace, a little beige lace. That might be pretty. I could then weave a ribbon through that. I have another pink ribbon and it would cover the little flowers. Now you go under there and over there. I wonder if this would fit through. I don't know if that, there's a needle. I'll grab a chenille needle. Oops, we need a bigger A bigger eye, there she is. Come on, out you come. Don't be disappearing down there. Pull two needles out. Oh my goodness sakes. Okay, let's have a play. I've got this corded ribbon, variegated. What would that look like woven through? Sort of looks like nothing. It, it's too narrow for a start. Yeah. Nope. And I'm pretty confident I don't have a pink ribbon that's in the tones of this. I remember at the time of going through my stash. What am I doing here? This is all getting out of control. I remember going through my stash thinking, oh gosh, I wish I had another piece of that, but I don't. So I think I'll just pick something else. Let's have another little look. Got some little itty bits of these left that were used on some of the other sides. Maybe we can utilize one of those. This is a little one. I mean, I like that. Maybe I can tuck it in under the ribbon. That'd be cute. So it's building layers. Going to do that. So I'm just going to trim that end. It's a little tatty going to slide it into there and just put a quick pin in it. I can fiddle with it when I'm ready, but at least it's held into position. I'm pretty confident I can cut that. And I'll tuck it in underneath the ribbon. I'll just create a little, little detail there. Now I could do with something there, something there. Do we lay down some of that? No, I sort of wanna wanna use some this ribbon, but I need it to be oh that'll work. Like I've been using paper clips to hold some of the laces together and they go on beautifully great idea but when you want to get the paper clip off it's probably not such a good idea oops better take this call won't be okay. sorry about that guys that's my ringtone on my phone i should have had it on silent but uh luckily i didn't and i took the call because the shops are opening our two shops and the computers don't work so that was one of the staff ringing to say, hey, the computers don't work. So Gary's having a little look at it. Just having a look in another box of lace. See, I am slightly organized. I'm thinking along the lines of that, but I don't know. These are some hand dyed ones that I picked up at a 
It's a bit strong. What else is in here? Well, there's some pinks. That could work. There's lilac-y. Mm, not really. No. That cream might work. Ah, there's the ones I was using at the beginning of the project. And I used all of it, but this guy here, there was a little bit of it in that. In the lace box that I was pulling from at the beginning of the project. So this is what we're going to use. That's what I want. Just puts that little pretty... I think that's where it's going to go. So cut a piece of that off. Just adding layers and texture is what I'm trying to achieve here. So sorry about having that phone ring in your ear. Should have had it on silent. <laughs> now you know what my ringtone is. It's, um, I think the song's called Christmas Bells. And being that I own Christmas shops, I end up choosing that ringtone because you'll be often in the shop chatting to a customer. And there's nothing worse than your phone ringing in your pocket. And I sort of need it on because of, you know, stores need me immediately. So you'd be talking to someone and some, some crazy ringtone or pop song or whatever was coming on and I end up finding that and it's been great because it just rings the Christmas bell song and um, they're none the wiser they think like a Santa that makes music behind me is ringing or just suddenly you know senses senses go off on a a piece as you're walking through those types of uh, places, Christmas shops. So you just assume that that's what it is. And I can chat to a customer knowing my pocket is ringing. They don't know my pocket is ringing. So I'm not being rude. That's pretty good. I need to stop laying down textures because I'm going to end up with more textures than actual stitched threads but that's good that gives me plenty to decorate and play with okay so that's a theory behind my ringtone having something that customers don't know is actually ringing. I might just add that one there. Couple pins, lots of pins. Well, this will give me something to do. For some reason, the computers are not allowing the stores to log into the server so hubby's in the process of investigating that further Okay, I think that's probably enough for now because otherwise I'm going to end up with lots of needles and pins and it's going to be a bit of a bugger to sort of stitch around. Do I want any more of this? I really love the effect that this gives. It's like a... Yeah, what the hang. If I don't like it, I can always not put it on, but I just love how I can 
get in amongst the sari silk and lay beads down and stitches and it just provides that really nice texture. Don't you get sick of saying the word texture or hearing the word texture? I feel like I say it all the time. It's like the, the word of the, the day at the moment for us, um, all of us slow stitching. There we go. So now it's a lethal combination of pins <laughs> and random bits. So what the plan will be is I still need all of those because they lay in over the top of it. And then I come through with my little beads and bead again. So got a little bit of work to do. So I might pause the video. This one's going to be a bit of a chopped together video. That's the view of it from that angle. So I've got plenty of space to do some stitching. All right, pop a needle in there. I think my next task, where's my little container to put the job in, will be just that. Stitch it all down, ready for some more stitching and embellishing. Okay, guys, I will pause the video again and um, probably a few hours will go by and I will get this all stitched down. Okay, yeah, that's the plan. I'll see you in a Hello, minute. everyone, I'm back. So hours have gone by. I did manage in amongst many phone calls and sitting around contemplating things and life and, you know, all of the, the wasting time activities, get it stitched down. So now I'm into the decorative phase. I did cut off a piece and Fudgy's just arrived. Hey, Fudge. He's saying it's afternoon tea. Not yet, Fudge. I did cut a piece of this pretty cord off as I had visions of putting it down somewhere as a um, fly stitch but when I was sitting on the couch with my needles I didn't have any really thick uh, not really thick some really hey fudgy big needle eyes so I thought I'll just leave it come back in here turn on the camera and I thought maybe yeah I need something with a big eye to take that wider I really got to buy some needles. I just too many have gone into the couch and I've got like a heap of the one style. See, this is what we need. This cruel needle for ribbon embroidery. It's just got a bigger eye so you can get prettier threads in that through it. I thought I bought a pack of them to be honest. Hmm, maybe my memory hasn't served me correctly. Okay, but that will do it. And you know the other thing, after doing all of the invisible stitch to get those layers down, my finger is so sore, so I need my little pink needle. Time to take a couple days off, I think. Let the um, fingertips recover. I was talking to Jennifer Colston, the author of those books, Fill Proof Embroidery and, you know, Jennifer. I said to her, oh, she was, she made a comment that she was quilting, hand quilting a quilt and she was waiting for the callus to kick in on the end of her finger because then she was, you know, tough and ready. But um, I said, well, how long does that take? Because that'd be handy. <laughs> she said years. So something to look forward to, I guess. Now, where are we going to do this fly stitch? Sort of think we might do something down here. Is that going to come through all the layers? No, it's not. I need a bigger needle. I might have to go shopping for some needles, guys. What a perfect excuse to go shopping. Let's just pop that back onto there because I cannot find a needle 
big enough to do that. So I need to go visit some needle selling establishments or unpick the bottom of my couch because it's got this protective piece of fabric to keep the likes of me out of there and retrieve all my good needles. Now this one should hold this DMC thread and make a nice hole for it to slither through without any, any pushback on my poor little fingers. So that's where we're at. Well, we might do a running stitch. Yeah, see, lovely. If it slithers through, it's the right needle doing the right job. That goes for the threading of it. That goes for the coming through the fabrics. If there's resistance, you got the wrong needle. It's as simple as that. And you're just putting strain on your joints. And if you do a lot of embroidery, you just have to stop and go get yourself the right needles to carry some of these heavier threads or couch the thread down. Don't attempt to pull it through. But I know I have use that particular pretty thread. That's part of that Steph Francis little pack. I know I've used it on those other ones in a fly stitch. Yeah, there it is there. So I need to find something better. But this will do the trick. This will get me going anyway. I've got a lot of stitching to do. So I sort of lay down a heap of running stitch in normal crochet cotton and that's the one I want a little bit thicker and then um, do some fly stitch I was thinking too about this little square that might be a nice spot for a little piece of crocheting you know a little motif I'm just going to focus on one square or one rectangle and go for it. You can spend hours scooting around all of these little spots doing decorative stitches. So now it's just a case of sitting back, relaxing and stitching as long as you have protective wear and the right needles, which I didn't, but that's okay. We shall endeavor to go shopping, <laughs> any excuse. I was really cursing it. It was funny because I think um, we went out for an hour or so and did a few chores. We had a drop into um, one of our shops and um, do a few things with the manager and help her out a little bit and then we toddled off got home and we uh i had a really ripe avocado so i said to my husband don't don't plan anything for lunch we don't need to bring lunch in we need to eat this avocado and i had some nice salmon so we had just you know toast avocado just a light lunch and then we were just sitting on the couch and I picked this up and I just started stitching all of those areas down. We're just chatting, chatting about the business, chatting about life, chatting about the future. You know, just chatting, coming up with all sorts of harebrain ideas. So before we know it, we've got pen and paper out and we're workshopping things and we're like, no, that's not going to work. What about that? What about that? It was just one of those long lunches where... You just contemplate the world. And in the process of going out and about this morning, or after mid-morning, we stopped in at Zarafa's, and I really enjoy their coffees. So I got myself a large coffee, takeaway coffee, and I thought, oh, that'll be, that'll be nice. I can sip on that for the rest of the afternoon. But because we sat down and had lunch with the toast and that, I pretty much drank it fairly quickly. Usually I sip on them. If it's the second coffee for me, I make one in the morning, but if I'm out, I buy one from them, but not every day. 
and I try and sip on it, but I didn't with lunch and chatting. I drank it really quickly. So I'm sitting there and I just finished stitching all of the um, invisible stitch. Everything was nice and secure. All the pins had returned to that little case. And I started thinking, well, I'll get into the decorative. And I said to my husband, I should go in and turn the camera back on because I'm sort of at the next stage of this process. But oh, I couldn't be bothered getting off the couch. So I cut that piece. Then I went looking for a needle, couldn't find the needle, tried numerous needles, they all didn't work. Then I realized my finger was getting sore and about then the coffee kicked in. So I was feeling quite exacerbated. <laughs> and I said to my husband, I said, oh, I suddenly feel really stressed. So I put everything down and he's like looking at me going, gee, needlework doesn't usually do that to her. I said, I don't have the right needles. My finger's sore. Oh, and I was exacerbated. So I was frustrated. And I said, and half the problem is the coffee's kicking in. <laughs> so we're like, right, hop up, just walk away. So we went outside and I went and sat on the grass at the back of our block with Pepper and Bandit and had lots of cuddles and just rolled around on the grass playing with those pair of gooses. And then my husband decided to release some water from the pool and what that does is down the back where the, the pump is there's a pipe where the water comes gushing out so everything was rosy under the trees and the sunlight rolling with the dogs so, you know having puppy love cuddles and kisses husband lets the water out of the pipe bandit goes yippee runs straight over to it, starts chomping at the water, goosing around. Now there's mud, there's water, there's a wet dog. He comes running back to Pepper and I, quietly sitting down on the grass, having a, a cuddle, and it was on. Wet dog, mud. So, of course, now I'm filthy, feeling exacerbated again. <laughs> so I've stomped up to the house to have a shower. <laughs> My husband's like, what happened? I said, you wet the dog. <laughs> so <laughs> I've come in, had a shower to wash the wet dog and mud off of me. And I was sort of in my going out clothes because I hadn't changed from when we ducked out to the store. So, oh, I tell you, exacerbated once again, still with the coffee going through me. So I said to him, I'm going to have a shower, tidy up. And I'm going to go and put the camera on, find a decent needle, find my protective finger wear and do some stitching. And here I am. Here I am. And I still really don't have the right needle. Oh dear. Problems of a stitcher. I think I'll, no, I will go to, I think I want to do this one next. Do a little bit of fly stitch down that ribbon. I thought I'd stitch that down properly there, but that doesn't look secure. And now Fudgy's like, it's afternoon tea, Mum. He's exacerbated. Everyone's exacerbated. I don't even know if that's a word. Is it a word? Anyway, that's how I feel. Now the sun's coming in the room. So you guys are going to get exacerbated because you're seeing dappled light come into my craft room. The trials and tribulations. Really nothing to complain about. And I now have an excuse to go needle shopping. So maybe tomorrow. There's still plenty I can do without threading up that really thick thread. I can do beading, no problems. I can do lots of running stitch. So really the thick thread is a, I'll get there soon to get needle. I might even have one tucked away. I've got an old sewing box. And in there I tend to, whenever I go shopping and I buy another pack of needles, I just tend to pop them in there 
So when I do need a needle, that's sort of the second place I go after that needle book. So I go shop my stash first. And there might just be a packet of cruel needles. I want a really long one. I've got shorter ones with the big eye on them, but I find them difficult to use. I don't know, my, my fat fingers can't seem to hold them real well. I like a little bit of length. That's, that's a really good length for me. What size is that? One and three quarters. Yeah, anything smaller and I just feel like I'm fumbling. So I guess the plan now is I just decorate this panel and then in the next video we will be able to move on to um, attaching it and also um, creating the tabs that go along that top seam. Oh fudgy bee, the tabs will go into the seam up here. As I stitch that last edge, they're all open along there. And then that's when the rope can be cut and wound through. So we are coming to the end of the project. They're so handy, these little totes. Hello, Fudge. Yeah, Fudge. He's coming up. He's going to come, push, push. He's coming up. Here he comes. Hey, Fudgy. Don't knock anything. Move everything out of the way. Say hello, Fudge. Get yourself comfortable. You can see his shaved leg from his dental work. Where they had a, a pain patch there. Poor pussy. But pussy's good now. To sit there, he wants his supper. Hey, it's a good boy. Yeah, that looks really good. That's such an old crochet thread. I'm going to miss it when it's gone. It's just such beautiful thread. It's nice when you find a, a half used or a three quarter use fudgy where are you going three quarter use crochet cotton and then you find that you really love it and it's it's just so nice to be able to use it and have it in your box of tricks it really matches well oh sorry did i touch your fur didn't mean to fudge can see his other, I don't know if you can, there's another shave spot there. That's where they put the anesthetic in, where they, they shave the pussy cat. It's, it's sacrilege, isn't it, Fudge? How dare they cut the cat's fur? Especially when the cat looks so beautiful. You wake up and they've chopped you to pieces. And you're missing some teeth. Goodness me. I'm slowly getting down. That's a big piece of pink ribbon. I just love how the piece comes together with all of the layers of stitches and yeah, and beads. It's really pretty. Slowly making my way. I must have done the stitches bigger last time. Oh, I know what I did. I did a few and then I did a line and couched it down. So I did stitch one, two, three, four, five stitches and then went straight down. More like a, a um, 
branch like that. And then come back up on yourself. And there's these little bugs flying around. I noticed heaps of them, like swarms of them down the back of the block. There must be rain coming or something. They're like a little fruit fly. Oh, he wants to get down. He needs, come on, Capus needs to hop onto my lap or a chair to get down to the ground. It's just a little bit too high from the table. So he's walked to the end of the table, turned around and come back to say, you've got to help me, mum. Yeah, there's, when I was sitting on the grass with Pepper, the sensible dog, um, I could see all the swarms of these little black insects in amongst the foliage of the trees. So I don't know what that's all about. I did hear that usually means that there's rain coming, but I don't know, it's so dry at the moment. But I did also have a look at the mulberry tree and it is loaded. So I might need to run the hose down there and just put it on a slow drip and really get the roots of the mulberry tree a really good drink because that'll really help promote um, some fruit. So that was good. Last season, we hardly got a mulberry. It was terrible. And I did, really don't know why, because we had a lot of rain. This year, it's a little bit drier and the mulberries are really coming on. It's, I'm not 100% sure why that is the case. It's good going down to the mulberry tree and picking fresh mulberries each morning for breakfast. I freeze a lot of them too and we've sort of munched through all of those now. Pick a big bucket of them and freeze them down and then when we make milkshakes in summer we've got some frozen fruit to add. So I think we're in for a bumper crop. I'll just run this cream thread through. I'm not pushing the needle. For you newbies out there that are learning all of this slow stitch business, I'm not pushing the needle right through because I've got the fabric, I've got that canvassy calico, and then I've got wadding, all to make the sides stand nicely. But there's no need for me to force the needle through all of that. So if you are new, you can slither that needle through the layers without putting too much pressure on your hands. Hey Fudge, you're back again. Do it because it's all about the longevity of your stitching. And the last thing you want to do is injure yourself. Otherwise you won't pick up a needle again. So be careful, it's easily done. Yes, Fudge, I know. Okay, I might leave it at that because Fudge has come in now second time and he really wants his supper. He's just gonna get, he's gonna get lippy. But you got the general gist of what I'm gonna do, just layer through some stitches some more beads and keep going until I get to the point where it's just thick with yumminess. I need to find some of this as well. This is like a chiffon. A little bit that through will be good. That'll soften things up as well. So I'll go digging for that. All right, guys, thanks for joining me today. It was a bit of a bitzer video. That's how it goes, isn't it? You can never get a run at these things. You're always stopping and starting. Welcome to life. All right, guys, look after yourselves, and I will see you in the next video. And this one, whenever it pops up, we'll be finishing it off, I think. Okay, stay safe. Bye.